Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cantina of Comics. Today we're going to make a Dothamir daiquiri. Mm, and we're going to talk about Dr. Afra and Bounty Hunters coming up. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Cantina of Comics. I'm Matt. And I'm Christy. And what are we making today? We're going to make a Dothamir daiquiri. Ooh, all the way from the planet Dothamir. Yes. It's a long journey, actually. Is it? So what do we need to make a Dothamir daiquiri? We're going to start with one bag of frozen strawberries. Okay. In the old ninja. Thank you. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> so we are using Admiral Nelson's coconut rum. I think it's like the knockoff Ad, of you Captain, know, Morgan. Captain Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> Admiral Nelson. <laughs> hey, it smells good. It's bottom shelf. Yeah. Listen, here so, at Cantina of Comics, we do most of our stuff with bottom shelf. <laughs> so he's a higher rank, but he's a Nelson. <laughs> Okay. So, so he could boss Captain Morgan around, maybe? I but guess. Captain Morgan's a pirate. He takes orders Arr. from nobody. Okay, so three. Four. Four, four. ounces Ooh. of Admiral, <laughs> Admiral Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> Nelson. And then the, <laughs> the lime of one. It's like dollar store rum. It's not dollar store rum. I paid 10 times dollar store oh. rum. Jeez. <laughs> okay, we, we missed a step because I distracted. Lime. Uh, okay. uh, the juice of one lime. Okay. Now, I made the mistake of getting my recipes confused. So we're gonna start with this, okay. and if it's not quite um, liquidy enough, we'll add a little simple syrup like another recipe okay. says. So, okay, Admiral ready? Nelson. <laughs> okay. I think we'll need to add a little bit more liquid, so. Okay. We'll do. It kind of reminds me of orange. Ooh. Was that smoke that no, came out of it? it? Cold. Oh, it was cold. Okay. So this is um, five ounces, but we're not going to use it all. So okay. we'll just add a little a at syrup. a time. Okay. Because I do not want to make the mistake that I make often, mm. which is too much liquid. So you just want to get it just right. I think we need a little more. Just a little I don't more. Think we're going to be able to drink it. <laughs> Five hours later. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. Man, it, it's it's got to be like a really fine balance because it's. <laughs> Should maybe add a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Just put the rest in. <laughs> no, I don't want it to be too liquidy. Gosh. No, we're almost there. Fine. <laughs> Fine. There <Okay>. you go. <laughs> there we go. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so when you make your recipe, you're going to do four ounces of, <laughs> you know, rum, whether it's dollar Admiral store or or rum or, yeah. <laughs> or lieutenant. And then, Lieutenant. Five ounces of simple syrup and okay. the juice of a lime. Mm. Okay. And it still seems to me a little bit on the thick side. It's like a slushy. Haha. Yeah. Mm. Yummy slow. <laughs> mm. Did they teach you that at Orange Julius too? Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. garnish mm -hmm. the lime wedge. Yes, yes. So there you go. It looks a, delightful. Did you use actual 100% real Sith berries? I did. <laughs> a dolphimir daiquiri. So let's... Clink. Clink. <laughs> oh. Should we get Try a spoon? It. That is fantastic. That's really sweet. Oh my yeah. goodness. I'm not... I can't even really distinguish the rum. Maybe you should add some more rum to it. I can always do that, you know. I like to add 
Yeah. Alcohol. So it is a little on the thick side, but so I would probably. So maybe add we the, could. Um, maybe we could just add more rum to it, and not the simple syrup. I would add the simple syrup and the rum. Why don't we try this? <laughs> Can I use Darth Maul's lightsaber to mix it in? To stir it up? <laughs> I might go right Ooh. through it. Huh. So when you go to the adult slushy store in the mall. In Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> in Vegas. And you ask for a Dolthamir, uh, a Dolthamir daiquiri. Make sure you say Canteen of Comics and just like Darth Maul, they'll give it to you half off. I know that one because he was like <laughs> cutting <Yeah. laughs> right uh -huh. in half. <laughs> I mean, I don't know a lot about Star Wars, but I know that. Jeez. <laughs> right, All right. Well, that is fantastic. I really like this. Yeah, I'll make this this summer. We can sit out on the patio. Oh, and absolutely. This this would be a perfect summertime drink. And don't knock Admiral Nelson, okay? <laughs> Admiral Nelson, I'm sorry. I don't know what navy you came <laughs> from, but go <laughs> Captain Morgan. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so coming up, we're gonna talk a little bit about Dr. Afra and Bounty Hunters, and we're gonna play another round of For What It's Worth, coming up. Welcome back to the Cantina of Comics. Today we're talking about two Marvel Star Wars comics. We're talking about Dr. Afra number eight and Bounty Hunters number 10. We're gonna start with Dr. Afra number eight, The Engine Job, part three, Old Wounds. This issue is written by Alyssa Wong with pencils by Ming Kyu Jung, inks and colors by Victor Olazaba and Rochelle Rosenberg. We pick up with Afra and Santa Staros on a mission to find the Nihil Path Engine, and that leads them to the planet Dolhar Hyde on the Outer Rim. There, they find a Nihil battleship that phased into a giant tree centuries ago. After a little spelunking, the pair enter the bridge of the ship and discover the power source for the ship. But they are soon discovered by General Vukora from the Unbroken Clan, who orders the clan's ships to fire on the giant tree. And so Afra and Santa have to retreat further into the tree to survive the blast. Our interlude takes us to Canto Bight, where Just Lucky is at the Fafia races to execute his contract with the Sixth Kin by assassinating Alfar Schult, one of the city's lowlifes. And now, here are my quick takes on Dr. Afra issue number eight. This issue starts out with Afra and Santa at a bar on Dolhar Hyde, and the bartender is an Otorlan, you know, like Max Rebo from Return of the Jedi. So that means the bartender is serving drinks with his feet. That eh, can't be too sanitary, but don't get too attached to him. While Just Lucky is lining up his shot at the Fafier races, he's singing a little tune, and that kind of reminded me of Samuel L. Jackson's character in the movie The Long Kiss Goodnight. And that's a little unnerving as Just Lucky is about to pull the trigger. The colors in this issue by Rochelle Rosenberg are very vibrant, especially while they're on the planet Dolhar Hyde. Now let's turn over to Bounty Hunters number 10, The Terminus Gauntlet Part 3, A Desperate Gambit. This issue is written by Ethan Sachs with pencils by Paolo Villanelli and colors by Arif Prianto. We start off with Valance back in the Imperial Navy after his leg has been removed and the Empire is about to reassign him to infantry. His fellow cadet Han Solo pops in and the two share a moment. But not for very long. Back to the present and Valance is on the exterior of the broken down rebel ship that's been taken over by Captain Scrag with the Onaka gang along with Dengar. Valance is able to get back inside the ship and begins to take down the Onaka gang members one by one. Our interlude takes us back to the rebel base on Rusan with Losha and the not quite as dead as we thought Ta'anga. The two begin to formulate a plan to go after Nakano Lash's killers. Back on the rebel ship, Private Sproul discovers that their ship was sabotaged by one of their fellow rebels, and that traitor is... Valance continues to eliminate members of the Onaka gang until he finally gets to Dengar, who tells him that Solo was put into Carbonite and is now on his way to Jabba the Hutt. The rebel fleet jumps in just as the pirates jump out, and Valance, along with Dengar, are now off to find Han Solo. 
And now here are my quick takes on Bounty Hunters issue number 10. Who knew Nexus could be domesticated? I'm sure it would take a lot to feed a Nexu and probably a lot to clean up after it. I wonder if they can be litter box trained. It's nice to see Ta'anga back and interesting that at first she wanted to kill Nakano Lash, thinking that Lash was responsible for the death of her brother, and now she wants to take out Lash's killers. Valance is in full Terminator mode in this issue and Villanelli does a great job framing Valance as he takes out the pirates. Lots of poodoo in this issue. Now, what did you think of Afra issue number 8 and Bounty Hunters issue number 10? We'd like to hear it. Go to our Discord page and look up EU Comics and let us know what you think. All right, welcome back to the Canteen of Comics. We showed you how to make a Dothamir daiquiri. It is very delicious. Okay. Lots of strawberries, but probably, yeah, probably thin it out just a little bit. Maybe a little bit more of our Admiral, <laughs> Lieutenant, Commodore. What's what's higher than Commodore? I don't know, I don't know either. Anyway, Five star Commodore. Nelson. Okay. Nelson. If you're gonna have Admiral, why have Nelson in Admiral? I Discriminating against no, not Nelson. I just think of a different name that's like you know, a little bit. Anyway. So, All right. so the origin. So tell me a little bit about the history of the daiquiri. So the origin of the strawberry daiquiri is that an American engineer who lived and worked in Cuba after the Spanish-American War by the name of Jennings Cox okay. um, is believed to have invented the daiquiri after running out of gin while throwing a cocktail party. So since uh -huh. rum is plentiful in the country, as evidenced by Admiral Nelson, <laughs> it proved a convenient the leader substitute in rum for the punch he was serving. He doesn't even stand up on one leg either. Like I don't know, what is that? It looks like a he's posing like a model. Yeah, but but with Captain Morgan, you know, he's got that leg up. He's got the pirate hat and everything. So mm. okay, well let's play another round of for what it's worth. So here's what okay. we have. Sorry. Dribble. Oh no! <laughs> you dribbled. Okay. So, <laughs> so we're taking a look at uh, this. This is a 1978 12 inch, but it's actually really 14 inches. Uh, Kenner from Kenner, a Boba Fett figure. And this one, if you find it in the Star Wars box, it came out in 1979. Okay. And if you find it in the Empire Strikes Back box, it came out in 1980. So this has a few different components to it. Of course, it has the Wookiee scalp braids Aww. here, because they hunt Wookiees. It has a cape, it. <laughs> he has the rifle here, mm -hmm. which I just dropped. <laughs> and it has the jet pack with the firing missile, and the firing missile has a string. Are you being very acrobatic right now? Yeah, isn't it? You picked it up with your feet, that's amazing. <laughs> First she ties <laughs> stems with her tongue and she pick up items mm -hmm. with her teeth. Or their feet. <laughs> so, um, if you were to find this in the wild, loose like this with all its components, it's gonna fall forwards. I just know it. Um, it could you could find it for anywhere from like two hundred to two hundred and seventy-five dollars. If you found it in the box, still sealed, we're talking about six hundred and seventy-five dollars. Wow. Wow. Especially if you find the Star Wars box, because of course you know you take it out of the box and you play with it. Right. But we break down the components. The Wookiee braid uh -huh. that can that has sold. I checked out completed auctions anywhere from ninety to one hundred and thirty dollars wow. by itself. Wow. Because you know when people took them out and, and played with the toy, they would lose a piece, lose mm -hmm. a piece, and now it's like, oh, I just have one piece before it's complete. Um, the cape here, the cape is about fifty dollars. 
Uh, the blaster rifle is about $70. You can find it on eBay. There's a plastic belt that it comes with. That's about $40. And so just the string that uh, wraps around the base of the jetpack here, <laughs> you think you'd pull it and you'd get as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> He's no good to me, Dad. Um, there's a string that this is attached to. So when you fire the rocket, you can bring it back. Just the string alone could be $40. So you're talking anywhere from about $300, $350 if you broke it down into components and sold them separately. But will we ever sell this one? But anyway, <laughs> so that's a that's Boba Fett and that's for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Cantina of Comics. Thank you for stopping by and checking out this Dolphamir daiquiri. It is very delicious. I wonder how it would taste with a real rum. <sighs> How would your pocketbook taste with the real rum? Probably pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want to see any of our other issues, issues, any of our other videos, just go to the Utini YouTube page and you can check out the Cantina of Comics section. Also, on behalf of Christy, I'm Matt. Keep on reading and keep on drinking. Do you like this? <laughs> Use the limes as a dipping sauce.